Hi y'all, what's up? It's your girl Lee and I'm back with another video. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. Um, you know, I had a wonderful time with God, had a wonderful time being productive, being with family, friends and loved ones, etc. And even if your week was not as great as anticipated, know that there's still another week coming up. But you know, don't waste it, make the most out of it. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first things first. Learn to know when you're wrong and do something about it. Ask for God's guidance. Let him lead you. I think it's really hard to be able to um, be honest with yourself and know and to admit that, okay, yeah, like this time, this was really on me. Like I could have really done better. You know, that's kind of hard. And honestly, it does show how mature you are once you come up to the point where you're like, okay, look, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to do better. And you actually take steps to be better. And the next point and that, especially as a Christian, is to allow God to guide you to be a better version of yourself. Because once you make that mistake and you're trying to better yourself, you can't do it by your own strength. You can't do it by your own understanding. You can only do it through him because he's the one who strengthens you and guides your path. The next point is don't give up. Two extra points that I put to that uh, one sentence, don't give up. Remember why you started it and use that as a fuel to keep going and to keep fighting. Stand strong with God. Because during your journey on, you know, embarking on, you know, different projects and things that you want to do, it's obviously fun in the beginning. Everybody has a lot of motivation. You know what to do, etc. right? But in the middle, it could become slow. It could become, you know, more challenging. And a lot of things can pop up, which can sometimes be very discouraging and can cause you to lose sight of why you started it in the first place. And... Um, that's why it's so important to just continuously remind yourself of why you did it in the first place that like when it gets hard You have that reminder and that second part where I said stand strong with God like use his verses to continue to encourage you so that it can Really just fuel you to keep going, you know, like for example when you're tired you remember Okay, you know God is with me though. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He is with me So even though this is a little dark road, this is a little dark turn I know he is with me and he's gonna walk me through it. So I'll be fine It might not seem like it, but I'll be fine. Okay Joseph survived Moses survived Abraham survived Sarah survived So I will survive too in the name of Jesus. Amen Next point is Face things head on because if you don't, you remain where you are or even worse, um, move backwards. Um, that's so true. I don't even know what else to add to that because it really speaks for itself. So I'm going to say it again. Face things head on because if you don't, you remain where you are or even worse, move backwards. Sometimes it can really be scary to face things head on. And especially when it's something during tumultuous times. And it's just something that's way out of your comfort zone. It's something that's really scary. But do it. Because if you don't, you're still just going to be there. And I'm sure you don't want to remain in the position where you are. I'm, I'm sure you want to move on. You want to go to greater heights, greater lengths, and move on. And just do better and grow more. So face it head on. It's going to hurt. It might sting. It might suck. But at the end of it all, you're going to be glad that you faced it. Instead of having regrets of why you didn't face it in the first place. Because you could have saved yourself a whole lot of trouble. You're going to have to face it. Even if you don't do it now, you're going to have to at some point. And sometimes it becomes so much worse that when you're like ready to face it, it's like double work that you have put on your plate. So whatever situation you're going through, whatever problems you're facing it, face it with God because he is there with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed because he is with you. So even what is given is given left instead of rights. Still keep going, still keep facing it, keep moving, keep fighting, keep pushing. Like, um, as for this week, um, with the devotional that I was following, I was focused on the story of Joseph. And if anybody knows his story, yeah, you know, the guy didn't have it easy at first. If you don't know his story, I will put up the verse that you can read it. Um, yeah, my guy just didn't have the best siblings, respectfully, respectfully. My guy was taken in as a slave. He was put in jail. He went through so many things. But through those things, God was with him. At the end of the day, he ended up coming out even way stronger and way better than when he first started uh, the whole thing. So it's just a reminder to just remember that, look, even when you're faced with a situation that's like, you know, less than ideal, 
God is with you and he will make something out of it. Even when it started out really bad, he will make something good out of it. Even when you're put in the most worst situations, he will make a testimony out of it. So don't worry about it. Don't worry too much to focus on God and allow him to just move in your life. Allow him to just take complete control. Trust him. Move with his guidance. Lean not on your own understanding and you see him come through in your life. Hallelujah. Um, next point is keeping it low key and or private doesn't mean you should stop your light from shining. That's something that I had to learn too because sometimes a lot of people think that if they, you know, um, are like private and stuff it means that like they are not allowed to shine it means that they have to go and put themselves in a corner look down on themselves and not you know um allow themselves to you know take opportunities and stuff like that like you can still just keep a keep a low-key keep a cool and still just allow your light to speak for yourself because in the book of matthew 5 verse 14 it says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden so if you are the light of the world if you are like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden why do you want your light to be hidden come on now you're a child of god made in his image god has just like so many great things destined for you even if you try it won't work so don't allow the devil to manipulate you into thinking that you need to hide your lights because that's not the way it works you allow your light to to shine but still just keep the necessary parts private if you go what i mean like don't nobody got to know every single detail about your life just the basic information and you keep it pushing it's, it's generally and really not that deep it really isn't okay so you don't need to tell everybody like to which specific school you're going you don't need to say what you're specifically studying for example you don't need to let people um in on every single thing going on in your household or every single challenge you're, you're facing you know in order for your light to shine you can still you know allow your works to speak for yourself your work ethic your projects your ambitions without people having to be all up in your business i don't really know what example to give so i really hope it's clear the next point is there is no problem without a solution. And that is from today's preaching at church. Um, our pastor said that and honestly makes sense. For every problem, there is a solution. It's just up to us with God's guidance to find it. And you will. You just need to persist in prayer. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, mm, mm, verse 13, I think. I think. I think. No, no, it was not 13. It was 17. Close enough pray without ceasing that's that's where it kind of comes into you know because obviously problems will try to persist and come up at every turn and that will suck but that's where you have to also keep going with your prayers because prayers are going to help you through it problems are always going to be there but that's why we always have prayer you know ready for us you know it's, it's available at all times so use it always keep praying even when you don't see anything keep praying when you see something keep praying that's why it says pray without ceasing whatever the season whatever the mood whatever the situation whatever the problem you keep praying because god is constant problems aren't wait wait now that i'm a, i'm on a roll that that's actually is hitting in my head i'm gonna have to write that down later either ways next one is don't overcomplicate things keep it simple and um i mean that more in the spiritual aspect too because sometimes when we pray right and we're trying to solve a problem we go like out of our way to like oh you know speak in tongues say they say a to z and don't get me wrong just like the bible states there is time for everything and there's a time to just keep it simple there's no need to always be making it something it is not don't make an elephant out of an ant, as the saying goes, you know. And, you know, as the word says, you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Sometimes you just simply need to state the word, which is the truth, over your situation. And just keep it at that. Now, obviously, you keep saying it, but don't overcomplicate it. Try and be making mathematical formulas of a prayer when it's not needed. <sighs> the Lord will help us. Yeah, that was the next one. You shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. You have to believe because it's faith that really does at least a good 50% of the work of your prayer. You cannot be praying persistently and consistently and not believe what you're praying about. So let's go to the book of Job 22 verse 28. Job 22 verse 28. I read from the New King James Version, by the way. You will also declare a thing and it will be established 
for you so light will shine on your waist speaks for itself i didn't even need to add anything to that next um and the last thing keep waiting and believing that comes in with the whole praying without ceasing you have to keep praying you have to keep believing you have to keep pushing keeping patience because in due time you will see the results of what you're working that hard for sometimes it's like dang god it's been so many years it's been so many weeks it's been so many hours it's been so many days like how long do i still have to wait now depending on whatever the case is god might say it to you maybe he might not but at the end of the day keep trusting god because he sees you he hears you he knows what you're going through and in due time he will answer your prayers and even if he doesn't answer your prayers i mean not your prayers but like maybe he doesn't answer like a specific prayer trust me it's it's for a certain reason definitely definitely it's not without any reason because if he answers it okay if he doesn't then it means it's either not time yet it's not a part of his will or it was just never meant to happen and that's why it's so important that you ask god to guide your prayers like you know when you pray you ask that it's not your will but his will that ends up being done so that's it yeah i'm not gonna lie it was a it was a pretty long list it was a pretty long list like guys uh let me show you guys hold on hold on i don't know if y'all can see it can you focus can you please focus well you it's not focusing but either way you can see how it's quite lengthy it's, it's quite lengthy i'm never gonna lie it's quite lengthy and i said it's trying to do your style <laughs> and you hear your style and you hear your style um got my church fit on it's giving nice it's giving silky isn't it isn't it yes yes it's not even my shirt it's my mom's shirt but who cares who cares like moms be having some of the greatest wardrobes so i just be picking my stuff out of it every once in a while either way we thank God for everything. I thank God for all of your lives. I thank God for my life. I thank God for the life of your families as well as my family. I just thank God that we're all alive, man. It's, uh, it's tough sometimes, it's not easy, but we're alive and that's great. That's a blessing. Let's definitely be thankful for that because you could be in an even worse situation than you are right now. It does not belittle the situation that you're in, but it does help you to acknowledge the blessings that you have, the privileges that you have. Either way, hope you guys have a wonderful week. Stay blessed, stay positive. Remember to just keep praying and to keep trusting him and to keep believing him and to keep waiting because in due time, his will will be done in your life. And even if it does not necessarily look the way you might want it to look like, just know that everything will always work out for your good, even if it might not look the way you, know, you had envisioned it to be. Stay blessed once again. And have a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye.